Just like all Americans, FLW Outdoors is proud of the men and women who serve our country in the armed forces. And it's why we started the National Guard Wounded Heroes Fishing Program, a chance for disabled veterans to spend a stress-free day out on the water, sharing stories and learning the tricks of the trade. As Minnesota winter mornings go, this isn't bad at all. In fact, National Guard Walleye Pro Mark Quartz thinks it's a pretty good day for fishing. Yeah, nice to meet you. Here atop Frozen Rush Lake, he's meeting National Guard veteran John Creasel for a day of fishing. John's brought along his wife, Katie, and one of his sons, Brody. Mark has the Creasels rigged with everything, even the most avid ice fisherman could ever want. They're here as part of FLW Outdoors' Wounded Hero Program. Mark believes there's no better way to show his appreciation. I can't thank him enough. I can't thank the men and women of our armed forces enough to give me the opportunity to have the freedom I have. Mark's right. The gift of his time and expertise is really no sacrifice at all compared to what the Creasels have given to this country. It's a story that begins the day John became old enough to join the Army National Guard. I spent my 17th birthday. The first day I was eligible, I went through the physical and did all the paperwork and stuff, so I was dead set on it. A few years later, his unit was called up to serve in Kosovo. When the tour ended, under no obligation at all, John volunteered to go to Iraq. I talked to Katie and said, you know, hey, there's this opportunity to go. A lot of my friends are going. I really can't see them going, and, and I can't sit at home and watch them go to war and, and live with myself. I was really just like, you know, I get it. It's part of who you are. It's part of why I love you. So if that's what you want to do, then I support you. So for nine months, Katie and her two boys made the sacrifices stateside. While John and his buddies of Bravo Company did what they were trained to do under the worst possible circumstances. December 2nd of 2006 was no different. This picture was taken that Saturday morning. That's John in the middle. To his right is Specialist Brian McDonough, and to his left, Specialist Corey Reistad. Comrades in arms, friends for life. Late that afternoon, the three men would find themselves in a fully armored 12-ton Humvee as part of a patrol sent to investigate suspicious activity. Uh, I, I was the vehicle commander. I, remember, I was using the radio. I remember calling in checkpoint 33, letting them know we were almost there. As we rounded the corner to the left, I remember hearing this, like, this plink. I don't remember flying through the air, and I don't remember hitting the ground. Uh, but I remember waking up, just kind of slowly coming to and being on the ground and hearing rocks falling. It sounded like a hailstorm. It seems like a dream at first, but the sounds are too real. I mean, I heard guys screaming, I heard yelling, uh, just terrible noises. I looked down and saw that my left leg just above the knee was connected by maybe a piece of skin, but most likely just my pant leg. On my right leg, just below the knee, about six inches below the knee, was gone. One of my close friends, Sergeant Gallant, came up to me first, and he says, I'm not going to lie to you, dude. He said, your legs are real bad, OK? We're going to get you through this. You're going to make it. And I said, tell Katie I love her, because I was pretty sure this was going to be the end. And uh, he said, you're going to tell her yourself. Just keep fighting. The battle for survival was just beginning. But for Specialist McDonough and Reistad, the fight was over. Both men, both friends, died in the blast. The supreme sacrifice made at a bend in a desert road thousands of miles from home. I woke up to the phone ringing again. Uh, it was like midnight, and it was my mother-in-law. And she said, Katie, I need you to sit up. And I knew right then, like that's like the worst thing. That, and I really thought that she was going to tell me he was dead. The news was bad enough. John's mother explained he'd lost his legs and his odds of survival were slim. I can tell you that is the most horrible phone call that I've ever had. For hours, she heard nothing. I figured that I didn't get phone calls because they were sending someone to my door to tell me that he had died. 
Finally, Katie was summoned to Germany where John was clinging to life. She'd expected the worst, but couldn't prepare for what she saw next. I collapsed. I completely collapsed in the doorway of his room. You, you couldn't look at somebody like that and believe that they would live. But Staff Sergeant John Creasel still had plenty of fight left. He survived surgery after surgery, making it back to Washington's Walter Reed Hospital, where he awakened from a coma eight days after the explosion. For me, that's probably the toughest moment of my life for right up there with them. Um, you know, realizing that I lived through something that my friends didn't. With Katie and then the boys by his side, the grief and guilt slowly gave way to the outlook that has since defined his life. Uh, if I spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair, um, at least I get to see my wife and my kids and, um, and live. On December 20th, John had a visitor, the President of the United States. George W. Bush pinned the Purple Heart on John personally. My favorite part is that he got down to eye level with my children and said, you know, do you, do you understand what this Purple Heart is? explain the medal and he, and he said are you proud of your dad and they said yes and uh, he said you should be he's a hero and he is a hero by anyone's definition but his own you know i'm not a hero driving over a bomb doesn't make you a hero no he's not but you know what he's a hero because at 17 he raised his hand and said i'm going to serve my country he's a hero because at 24 he said i really want to go to iraq that's what makes him a hero. Today, John gets around remarkably without a wheelchair. Whether it's at his job as a civilian contractor with the Minnesota Guard or ice fishing with a pro. I would have never known meeting that man today that he had lost both of his legs in action. Um, you know, and that just goes to show what kind of soldiers we have in our country. John hadn't been fishing in years. Katie and Brody haven't been ice fishing at all. You can understand why Mark has been looking forward to today, to say thanks in his own unique way. He knows a rod and reel can't make the scars of sacrifice disappear in a day, but he does understand that memories like these can last a lifetime too. <laughs> We've had opportunities to take people out that have never been fishing before, and to be able to give that back to them for what they've done for us is just a great opportunity. It's funny how this Wounded Hero program works. The anglers are supposed to provide the inspiration, but somehow it usually works the other way around. There is another postscript to John's remarkable story. He's written a first-hand account of his near death and his second chance at a new life. The book is aptly titled, Still Standing. And last year, the former staff sergeant was elected to the Minnesota State Legislature, the first Republican representative in his district ever. I find it very um, inspiring that after all that he's been through, that he just continues to put himself out there and challenge himself and try new things and really want to make a difference. Just over four years ago, I was laying there on the desert, you know, nearly dead, and now you know, going from staff sergeant to state representative in four years. It's been, a, it's been a heck of a ride. Even today, he can't believe he's really here. You know, we got through it and I think uh, we're all stronger because of it. My kids, my wife, our family, you know, there's, there's nothing that can stop us now. They don't make heroes any more heroic than John Creasel. He is still standing for what he believes. He's serving again inspiring still an amazing story and truly an amazing family if you know a disabled veteran that might benefit from the national guard wounded heroes fishing program just go to our website flwoutdoors.com and click on the link